Hey guys, welcome to Whole Garage. Today, we're gonna to be doing a little tune up on the old D160 John Deere here. I'm gonna show you guys how to change oil, gap spark plugs, and change the fuel filter also. So get your hot coffee and your working gloves ready to go. Okay, so first I wanna have a shout out to all the men and women of Serve America are currently serving or have served thank you all for your service and then we're going to get right into it all right so here's a few items that we're going to need this is the tractor that i'm going to be working on today uh john deere d160 so i'm going to start off by popping the hood uh just be careful on the hood on these things because they're made out of plastic now so you can't break them all right so this particular john deere is a 25 horse this would be your air filter. We're gonna look into that. Uh, this, this engine's a V-twin, so you've got two spark plugs, one on this side, and then one on this side. This is your oil dipstick to check it and to also fill it. Okay, coming back over here on the right side is, this is gonna be your fuel filter right here. Uh, as you can see, this one's getting pretty crusty. Right below that, you've got your twist off oil filter it's similar to a car um, but it's much smaller and to get to that we're going to we'll have to pull this little panel off i think it's just this one bolt some riding lawn mowers may not have an oil filter just getting the oil change is going to be the most important thing and then also we're getting, like i said we're going to look at the air filter see how dirty it is all right, so here's, this kind of looks like a lot, but it's really not. I'll show you all a few tools and then what I use. I went to the store, I went to Home Depot. I picked up two quarts of oil, the John Deere 1030. It does call for that in the book. I spent around, this stuff's getting pretty high, so I spent around $40. I did buy the John Deere brand. Um, this oil filter was like $13. These are like almost $7 a piece. So it's, it's kind of pricey, but you want to make sure that you're getting the right parts. This is pretty much going to do it. I didn't buy spark plugs because this tractor only has, I think it's like 20 hours on it. Let's, let's go look. I'll show you. Okay. I was wrong. My tractor's got 43 and a half hours on it which is really low because I bought this in 2016. So we're gonna pull these spark plugs and we're gonna see if it actually needs them. So now the tools that I use. So first, you gotta get you some coffee and you know, you gotta have your John Deere hat out. You just gotta be ready to go, you know? All right, so some tools that I use. The first thing I'm gonna grab out of my toolbox is a flashlight because I hate working on stuff not being able to see what I'm doing so I used to use this trusty old mag light uh, I like this one it's LED I can find stuff with it but it takes up my free hand so I recently started using these uh, headlights this one's made by Duracell but these things are awesome and I, I won't work on anything else without it so I, I love those things. Uh, you're going to need a socket set, a ratchet, an extension, and then you're going to need a spark plug socket that has the little rubber grommet inside. It's going to help you keep from breaking your, your spark plug uh, ceramic. So like I said, we're going to try to salvage these spark plugs. They're $5 a piece. I mean, that's not expensive, but hey, if we can just clean them up, and the tractor still runs good, why not? This is a feeler gauge. The book on my tractor calls for 30 thousandths gap, spark plug gap. I'll show you all how to do that. We're gonna use this wire brush and some WD-40. And what I like to use is these little cups that your kids always have laying around or your, your wife, they go to the dollar store and they buy this stuff for, you know, just doing art projects or something, watercolors. I like to use these little cups when I can. 
just to keep it nice and clean. So you know, use what use what you want to, but I like to have uh, these little cups on hand. And then get you some paper towels or some shop towels because it's going to get kind of messy. We're going to look at the air filter also. So I'm going to use this on my air compressor. I'm going to use this blowgun. You can use a can of compressed air. You can use a leaf blower. Whatever you got. So I got, you know, pretty big hands. So it's hard to get up in there. So I like to use this oil filter wrench. It's, it's like a strap. It has a little rubber strap on the end. Uh, it's got an arrow on there. It tells you what way is going to loosen or tighten if you want to turn it around. But I like to use that. We're going to use anti-seize on the threads of the spark plugs. I'll show you all how to do that. All right, so let's get to it. Like I said, get you a socket set. Also get some gloves. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking these. This is your air filter, like I said. So I'm going to take these little nuts off. Reuse your air filter if you need to, you know. It's, so this one's pretty dirty. I'll take this little foam. It's kind of hard to do this while I'm filming, but. Okay, so I got this little foam piece off. This is going to catch a lot of your bigger stuff. So this is foam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in like soapy water and just kind of let it soak. And then I'll wring it out and let it dry. And that's, that's pretty much it for that. So this is the, you know, paper element air filter. And she does look kind of rough. Looks like maybe some water got in there or something. I got my bucket of soapy water. <coughs> Just some Dawn dish soap. And then, like I said, I'm going to put this foam element. I'm just going to put it in that soapy water. Let it soak. And then, got my air compressor right here. I'll show y'all. You just, the main thing is, is you don't want to blow a hole in this. So, you can even, like, take this tip off. And then it's going to shoot a, a wider pattern of air. So, you just, you don't want to put a hole in that because it's going to suck dirt in. Obviously, you want to go outside as well. So, we'll walk out here. I'll show you. Okay, so when you're doing this, don't blow like don't blow into this don't blow into it because you all you're doing is you're blowing dirt you're trying to get it past into in, inside here so when you do it you want to go from the inside okay so it's it's sounds silly but i mean you, you're really defeating the purpose when you blow it from the outside You can, you know, you can blow, you can blow it on the outside, but just, if, if you've got some bigger stuff stuck in here, you can. So I'm not going to say you can't, but I don't, because I don't want to put a hole in there. Okay, so it looks pretty clean. So we're going to call that good. This foam piece, I'm just going to rub it around and then just kind of, you know, squeeze it out get get the dirt get the, get the dust out of it rinse it off and then put it out in the sun to dry okay I got it rinsed off looks pretty clean so like I said I'm gonna let it dry if you don't have the sunlight available you know you, you can blow this out with air hose as well but since the sun's out it's a nice pretty day out we're gonna go ahead and just let that dry okay while that air filters foam elements drying we'll move right into the spark plugs so I got my 5 8 spark plug socket and then just just a regular 3 8 ratchet with an extension on it just whatever fits your mower whatever whatever you like so we'll pop this spark plug wire off and then the main thing to check on this is just make sure that it's not falling apart and then Make sure that you got a, a pretty positive connection on the tip of that spark plug. You should hear it should be a little bit of resistance on there. Um, and then there's a metal 
like clasp up inside there and you just want that to be relatively tight on there so these these particular plugs are from Briggs and Stratton this is obviously a Briggs and Stratton engine 25 horsepower so it's a V twin so I've got two spark plugs I've got one on this side and then there's one on the other so you're basically just going to do the same thing over here that you do on this side so we'll go ahead and pull this out okay so I got my socket on there and then just be careful because you can break that ceramic in there and then you know it's yeah they're five dollars but if you strip the threads out in the block or the head you know it, <laughs> you're, you're in a, a, a little bit different situation so just be careful so just kind of give it a lefty loosey ratty tighty pop it loose and then it might even come out with a spark plug socket if not just twist the rest of it with your fingers and get my mitts in here this one's looking like it's it needs to be cleaned we'll just say that but the, the top of here is what you're looking at this ground strap you just want to make sure that it's there and it's not like missing or broken off and then just kind of check the square of it make sure it's still kind of square on the end and then the electrode here you just want to make sure that it's not burnt up either so we do have it does have some electrode on it but it is it does have some soot on there it's probably just from using the choke to start it and not letting it warm up <laughs> it's all right the mower did run good still so i'm not worried about it um, like i said make sure that you got the right spark plug as well because if you don't this is what's going to hit the piston so if it, if it goes down too for protrudes too far into the cylinder you're going to hit the piston and that's going to bust off and then you're going to have internal damage in, in the engine so make sure when you're buying these that you buy the right part number and then another tip is these this porcelain right here even if there's like a hairline crack you're gonna get like a misfire so just look this over real good a lot of people overlook this part and then you know they'll just put it back in oh well you know there's a little crack right here or whatever but what it's, what's going to happen is, is this, this is actually an insulator. So it's going to, it's going to jump to the closest, you know, ground. It's, this is basically an electrical system right here. So it's going to jump to the, to the, to the easiest place that it can ground to. So if you don't have this insulator on here or it's, it's damaged, then you're going to have a misfire. You're going to have a, an issue with, with the motor. My tractor has this little sticker on here and it tells you when to service all these items. You can, you can go by this or you can just look your tractor over and see, you know, look for yourself. If, if you want to take it to the dealer, you can. This is kind of what they go by, but uh, I do everything myself and I like to save money where I can. So, you know, you can follow this chart but I just I just kind of do it by feel and just do it when I think it needs to be done okay so like I said we'll clean these spark plugs up so I already pulled the other side I mean it, it looks like it's running pretty rich maybe the gas wasn't so good that I got so these these are they're both going to be good to reuse so you know this this is where you can save some money so, you know, I'm look, I look the other one over, the porcelain looks good, the threads aren't cross-threaded. So what we're going to do to clean them up is, first we're going to get some WD-40. I'm going to put some in this cup. We're going to kind of let them set in here like this. And then, honestly, that's, that's the best thing i found that cleans them up. If you, if you guys have something better, let me know. But, uh. I pretty much use WD-40 on everything. Okay, so I got my light out here. Uh, 
as you can see it's starting to clean it up pretty good it's getting all that old soot off if these little washers come off just make sure that you put them back you either have a tapered seat plug or you'll have a washer on there like that so whatever whatever type of spark plug you have typically you'll you'll have this this washer on here on small engine stuff as you can see that insulator in there should start kind of turning white when you get it cleaned up and then your electrode and your strap is also going to get cleaned up i'm going to turn this light off because it's kind of messing up the camera but there we go okay so yeah this still needs to be brushed up i'm going to let it soak a little bit longer and then we'll come back to that Yeah, don't be afraid to, you know, get down on it here because you're trying to make this thing run a little bit better. This is where you're saving your $10 at. A lot of people just throw these away, but, you know, what's wrong with a little elbow grease when you can? You can reuse these things. So that one's pretty good. And then I'm gonna wipe it down with a paper towel and I'm gonna call that good. So you can tell I got quite a bit of stuff off of them. They were kind of fouled out. And then, you know, they're not perfect, but that right there is gonna be good. So we'll check the gap on them. This one, about the same. But, I mean, that, that right there is going to be just fine. It's going to run good. Okay, now that we got our spark plugs clean, I'm going to show you all how to gap them. So, like I said, my, my particular tractor, they want you to gap the spark plugs at 30 thousandths. So, this is a feeler gauge. You can get these at any automotive store. There's supposed to be a gap in here. And it's a specified amount, usually by the engine manufacturer. And it's going to be between that electrode on the bottom and then the strap on the top. And that's why it's important that that's that that's there and if that's missing or burnt or it looks you know bent or something like that that you can't get another gap into that that area then it's time to replace these what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my feeler gauge and i'm going to go to 20 thousandths this particular feeler gauge has you know multiple blades on it but i don't have a 30 thousandths blade so I'm going to add my 10 thousandths blade, as you can see, it's 10 thousandths. And then I'm going to add my 20 thousandths blade here. I call it a blade. You can call it whatever you want. But you, what you're going to do is you're kind of going to try to put those together as much as you can. And then you're going to go inside between the strap and the electrode. That should go in there without wiggling around. If it doesn't go in there, then you need to kind of, what I do is just kind of like force it in and then just kind of get a bend on it. It should be pretty tight in there, but you should be able to still pull it out and put it in. If not, then you'll have to adjust this, this strap here, like I'm saying. If it's too, if it's too wide, if the gap's too wide, if, if your feeler gauge slips in and out of here real easy, then you're just gonna take your workbench and you know, not a hammer, not don't put it on metal or anything like that because you could you could crack something in here these are these are pretty fragile so i like to use like a piece of wood and then you just tap 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 until you get that clearance just right on there and as you can see just that little tap right there it closed the gap up too tight okay i got my spark plugs gapped at 20 thousandths so now we're going to put them back in. I'll show you all how to do the... First we're going to use this anti-seize. This stuff is really messy so that's why I have these... That's why I have these gloves here. So anti-seize the thread only. Don't get it down here where, the, where you're going to be into the cylinder because you could, you know, foul this plug out or you could get it could short out or it could not even fire so 
just just put a little bit on the threads like right here and this is going to help you get it out next time and then also it's going to save your threads in your block or your head wherever your spark plug goes into get your big <laughs> mitts out i have trouble getting these gloves to fit so as y'all can see these things are probably going to rip but this stuff is really nasty so it's really hard to get off it's probably the hardest thing to get off that you could ever do in the garage so uh, you know wear your gloves i'm just gonna dab like a little bit on the threads like that and then that's it you know boom done and when you get done you just kind of wipe the rest of it into the threads like that and then that's that's going to be good now we're ready to install these spark plugs so i got my spark plug here and i'm just going to put these in by hand when i first start i like to just put them in by hand um, if you can if you can't then you know you can put them into that that socket that has the rubber on it to make sure that you don't to break these things but you know you're, you're kind of rolling the dice every time you do this so if you drop these they're probably going to break so i've got a piece of cardboard down here i i used to throw all this cardboard away that you know you always get but i started saving it for stuff like this keeps keeps the garage floor clean later when we change the oil uh, this is going to help you from getting oil all over the garage and then also if i do drop the spark plug it's going to help you know it might save this so all right, we're gonna thread it in by hand right now. Okay, so I got it threaded in by hand, and now I'm just gonna take my ratchet, flip it around to tighten, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and start tightening it up. Um, just, you know, like I said, just be careful on these because, you know, you, you don't wanna break anything. You're just trying to do a tune up. You don't wanna have to get into the engine or anything like that, so. Just keep it, keep it simple, take your time. And you know, just, there's probably a torque specification for this, but you know, just, just be smart about it. Don't over tighten it, but you don't want it blowing out either. So put a little love on there and then she'll be good. Also, if you, let's say <laughs> you're tightening this and then it gets a lot easier to tighten, then that's when you know that it's a bad day. We're gonna put that ground strap back on and you should hear that click. And then this should be pretty firm on there. And then you can inspect this wire while you're looking. Sometimes it'll have some slack like this and you can pull it out and kind of look at it. But you know, don't, don't take anything apart or anything. Just if it's running good, it's probably gonna be good. But put some eyes on some stuff while you're in here. Moving to the right side. Pretty much the same thing over here. Like I said, my, my tractor is a V-twin. So it's it's mirror image. I'm gonna thread that spark plug in by hand. And then, you know, that anti-seize will help you put it in by hand also. That It's a lot easier to thread in. And that's gonna keep you from dropping it. That's gonna keep you from cross-threading it. It's just, it's just better to use that stuff. That's why I use it. So pretty much same song and dance on this side. You're gonna tighten this up and you're not gonna over torque it. But you wanna feel it, you know, get snug and then just snug it up and then be done. Don't, don't force it. Don't put any He-Man torque on it or anything. Uh, just, just give it some good love. Okay, my air filter element here, this foam piece is dry now. And then, like I said, I blew this one out. So let's go ahead and install that. We're gonna put this air filter back on with the spark plugs that we reused and cleaned. And then we reused and cleaned this air filter. We just saved about 30 bucks. But like I said, next year, I'll probably uh, splurge a little more here and we'll probably get a new air filter. And then I'll put new spark plugs in. If you're keeping your stuff original, don't throw these, don't throw these away. Put them in a box, have them, have them ready to, to view again so that when you buy these parts online or 
if you're going to a store or something like that, you're looking for these part numbers like this. This one, it, like I said, these, these Briggs and Stratton logos and stuff, this is what, this is what you're going to try to rebuy. So this is good information. You can Google everything, but it might not always be right. Even if this filter is bad, just put it in a box on a shelf or something and keep it for reference. Okay, so we're going to slip this air filter back on. Um, it basically just slides into that, that opening right there and then make sure it's snug. Make sure that, you know, like I said, this tray down in here, make sure there's not a bunch of dirt and stuff down in there. Rocks is going to get sucked into here and that's going to basically going to bog down your machine when all this gets clogged up. Uh, also, flip this thing over, this cover, and then you can see all that dirt in there and stuff. Wipe that thing off, you know? Wipe it off. Because what's going to happen is, is all that stuff's going to get, you're, you're going to suck all that right back into here that you just cleaned out. Paper towel, wipe it out. Uh, if you've got excessive dirt in there or something like that, you know, you can take a hose to it. Just make sure that it's dry when you put it back on. And then don't, you know, don't over torque these little nuts. Take them down a little bit at a time. Go to the other side, take it down a little bit at a time. These little plastic fittings and stuff like that are, they're kind of hard to find. And then when you go to John Deere, you know, they want an arm and a leg for everything. So try to keep it. Just, just be careful with this stuff. It's all, everything's plastic. We have a plastic world now, so, you know, this stuff breaks. Okay, so next we're going to go after this fuel filter right here. And then, <clears throat> what I like to use on these clamps is you just get, like, a, a pair of just regular pliers. You can use regular pliers. You can use channel locks. I like to use channel locks because I can open that jaw up a little bit wider or I can close it up if I need to. And then you can see that other clamp on the back right there. And then you just want to implement the way this goes on. So if your arrow is pointing this way, um, this is, you know, to the engine from the tank. So you definitely want to put your new filter. You want the arrow to come back the same way. If you don't have an arrow on there, then it might not matter, but you should have an arrow on there that points in the right direction. Okay, I'm gonna start on this fuel filter by pulling this cover off. I'm gonna use this socket right here. It's an eight millimeter. And then we'll take that off and then I'll show y'all how to do this fuel filter. I put a drip pan under there. I typically don't jack this thing up to do this, but since we're doing the fuel and the oil and everything, so we're gonna go ahead and do it. I've set my, I've got an e-brake on this one, I set it just so it doesn't roll back on me. And also I've got some of these little chocks that I put behind the tires. And then I just use a piece of wood on that front bumper and just jacked it on up. And then just for peace of mind, I, I put some jack stands under that axle just for safety. Okay, so we got our new fuel filter on here. We are dealing with gasoline. So make sure that you're working in a well ventilated area. Let's get to it. So I got the old filter off without breaking anything um, I just pulled those clamps back just a little bit on the hose on each side just put them down a little bit further and that's all you need to do you don't have to pull them all the way off unless you just want to um, the old fuel filter is not too bad so like I said I'm gonna keep these old parts yeah just keep this thing for a couple of days and make sure that your new one's not gonna leak Okay, so I got this new filter. So you know, made in Israel or whatever. It's kind of sad, but this is this is what it is. Uh, so we do have we do have an arrow on here. You can see. Basically, that means that the flow is going to be through this this side first, and then out this side, which is the way we took the other one off. So I'm just going to go ahead and slip that on there, and then put these clamps on. Put some petroleum jelly or something on there. Use that stuff on stuff that's hard to fit on. Just put it on there. Uh, if you don't want to, that's fine, whatever. But you are taking a risk on cracking this plastic housing here. So just do what, do what you want. But that's, that's what I like to do. 
So as you can see, we got the new filter on there. I put my clamps back on there. Gas did start coming up in there. So, you know, that's okay. At least it's not leaking out of this line right here. So, but we'll, we'll do a leak down test a little bit later, but I'm gonna go ahead and press on with the oil now. Okay, so what I like to do is, is I like to take the lid off my new oil and open up my new filter, give it a good inspection. So you're checking for this little O-ring and make sure that it's actually there. And then just kind of look at these threads and make sure they're not like, you know, really messed up or something or it looks like it got installed already. So that one looks pretty good. So I just, what I do is I just put a little bit of oil in there and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and fill this thing up. We, we will make a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to get as much oil soaked into that element as I can for, you know, initial startup. And then what I like to do is, is get a little bit of oil and go around this little rubber O-ring. Just put some oil on that little rubber O-ring. And what that's going to do is it's going to seal against the block better. And then also it's going to be easier to get off next time. On this particular tractor, the oil filters right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe all this dust and grease and stuff off. Just so I can get a better grip on it, taking it off. I'm ready to take the oil filter off. I got my drip pan down here. I'm going to have this ready to kind of like catch oil that's going to basically drain off the frame here because of the way this is designed. But I'm still going to try to get it collected in the drain pan. And then like I said, have some cardboard around so you can keep your work area nice and clean. Alright, so we're going to break this off. Uh, I got this like I said, I like these little oil filter straps. These things are cheap, but they, they work really well. This arrow is going to point to the direction that you want to go. So like Lefty Lucy, we're just going to go up like that. And then hopefully this thing will come off. So I got it loose. Getting your hands in these places and stuff is really hard for me. So these tools really help me out a lot just to kind of save some time and then frustration. We're going to go ahead and spin her off. Oil is going to come out. Uh, you know, that's to be expected. And then you're going to have stuff happen like that right there when you're not ready. So, I didn't have that ready. But yeah, just take it easy. Try to make as less a mess as possible. I got the oil filter off. I did make a mess. You know, that's okay. I'll, I'll wipe it up. I'll get it all cleaned up. The main thing is, is getting the oil off of this belt right here for your deck. Also, look up in here in your block and make sure that you got that O-ring off. It should come off with the filter. But sometimes that O-ring right there will stick onto the block and then you'll double stack the O-rings. And then this is, it's, it's going to leak oil when you start it up. So check that. And then check these threads. And then obviously if you have dirt or gunk build up in here, that's going to be a, that's going to be bad. But typically this is just, you're just going to wipe this out with a rag. Make sure and don't get any paper towel residue or anything like that blocking these holes. I'm not going to throw this oil filter away. I like to save everything just in case because I've had bad parts. So I, I want something that I can at least put back on, you know, until I can afford to buy more stuff because... Stuff's expensive, and if I got to go buy another one, then that's going to be a setback. So yeah, I like to. I'm going to keep this, and then also I'm going to reference this part number and make sure that I did buy the correct one before I put the, the new one on. Because you know I mess up a lot. <laughs> I can buy. I buy wrong stuff all the time. So just just a tip for yourself is to make sure that you are putting the same parts back on that you took off. This is the old oil filter. Just checking the part number to make sure I bought the right one looks like to be the same part number so we're gonna go ahead and put this new oil filter on I did fill this up with oil like I said so when I tip it up sideways it is gonna make a mess but that's okay at least I know I have some oil in the filter okay so I'm just gonna thread this on by hand 
and then just want to be careful here because you don't want to cross thread this you, you, you want it to go on smooth if it doesn't go on smooth and you, you've got a bad filter you need to get a different one it should spin on like literally like that easy and then you should be able to, to, to loosen it back that easy if, if there's a difference in that then you don't have a threaded on right I got the new oil filter on I got it hand tight for this particular instance, uh, I did use that strap wrench to put it on because I can't get my hand in here. So I just kind of give it a little bit of love. I didn't put a lot of torque on it, but we're going to leave this panel off right here for leak checks later. And then sounds kind of silly, but these little clamps and stuff are going to keep your hoses from getting burnt. So I don't think I showed while ago this line was out here like that I took that clamp off put take these clamps and you know reuse them put it, put it back in there the right way I got my clamp back I got this fuel line back together it's not touching them the engine block or anything like that fuel filters good to go we got it tight oil filters on let's go to the other side and we'll drain the oil out okay so now we're on the right side of the tractor this is gonna be your oil fill tube and this is also your dipstick i like to crack that open just to kind of give it like a, a vent this drain plug is like a you basically like press this little thing in and then it, it like pops out and then your oil is going to go down you know right below the drain right there so it's kind of cool but you got to be ready because as soon as you pop that off it's just going to flow right, right on out there's no real like you know slow threads or anything so it's just either on or off basically all right so as you can see i got that little pickcock thing i got it shifted all the way over and then now i'm just going to pull straight out on it and then oil's going to come out the oil's pouring out <clears throat> there's a little o-ring on there that we're going to inspect and then like i said make sure you get a drip pan because this oil is thick and it's hard to clean up Okay, so most of the oil is drained out. Like I said, I'm going to inspect this little O-ring right here. And you know, don't overthink it. Just wipe it off. If it looks good, that's fine. If it's not leaking oil when you pour it back in, then it's fine. That's all you really need to worry about. If, if it's broken off or something like that, you can go on a website and try to find that, that particular O-ring. You know, as long as... As long as it's not torn, you're going to be fine on that. Okay, so I got the oil drain back on there. And then you can see those little teeth. You can see it locked in right there. You just twist it back to the left and it locks in. All right, so now we're ready to put our new oil in. Um, <clears throat> I like to take the dipstick out and wipe it off too. I mean, why not? So get a clean rag, wipe that off. And then also, uh, when you're pouring your new oil in, wipe this thing out, you know, get it clean because you're putting, you know, dirt back up in there that you don't have to. So make sure and clean that back out. Okay, so I wiped this dipstick off. Um, also, there's a little O-ring up in here or it's like a little gasket. Just make sure it's there. Um, if it's not blowing out of the top, then you're probably going to be fine. And then, <clears throat> just like a car, you've got, I don't know if it's going to focus in here or not, but you basically got like a little area right there that you want to be in the middle of. So, this, this particular uh, engine takes two quarts. So, when we start adding back in, I'm going to put two quarts in, but... If it goes above that that top line or that top hole, then you know you can drain some back out. Uh, you're gonna have to be quick about it because you know you're gonna get a lot out. So if it's a little bit above or right in the middle, then I'm okay with that. So that's how I that's how I do it. So we'll go ahead and add the two corks. I like to save these bottles 
is I'll, I'll pour the old oil back in and then in a pinch let's say you've got a push mower or something another small engine that you don't really care about too much you can, you can reuse this oil because this oil is still pretty good it has an amber color to it it's still pretty good it's not you know it's not terrible so in a pinch you could reuse this oil if you needed to okay second quart going in so make sure you know you got your best clothes on when you're doing this because I just got oil on my shirt so but it's it's all right just part of it so second quart going in and then we're going to check the oil level uh, make sure you get you know all your oil out let it let that bottle sit down in there and drain a little bit take a break come back um, you want to get all your good oil in there that you need I put the dipstick back it is it does take a certain way to go in there you can see the, the two little prongs on this side there's two little teeth right there two little openings right there for two teeth to go in and then you only have one on this side so when you flip the dipstick over you can see those two teeth down in there so that has to be in there a certain way so make sure it sounds simple but that's going to give you know that it's going to get tight that way if you do it the other way it's going to break off so i got my drain pan out i got my empty bottles over there um, like I said, I'm going to recycle this oil into those bottles, so I'm going to save those bottles. I'm going to go ahead and down jack it, and then we're going to check the oil level on a, like a level surface. Okay, so I want it seated all the way in, in that keyway like I showed you. And then, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of hard to see with this camera, but, you know, we're, we're setting good. Uh, I'm gonna wipe it off and check it again though. So, like I said, we're setting pretty good. Uh, the oil level did come up to where it needs to be. So I'm gonna start it up and we'll do like a little leak test. Uh, and then all you gotta do after that is just put these little panels back on and then you're done. I got it fired up, it fired right up. Cleaning those spark plugs off really helps. Also another tip, you can kind of tell that there's too much air pressure in these tires. You can do like a little chalk line and then see how only this part of the tread is touching the concrete. I don't know if you guys can see that. If you really want to check it really good, uh, put some chalk on the ground and then track your mower over those, over that chalk line and then it'll give you a real pattern of how your tread is actually contacting the ground. Te technically, I've got too much air pressure in these tires because it puffs up, so I'm only contacting this part. So I think I've got 15 PSI in here. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down to 12, and then that should give me the width that, that I need on this. Kind of the same thing on the front right here. You can see that dust pattern right there. It's not all the way to the edges. So. I'm gonna play with the tire pressure a little bit on there. So yeah, don't forget to check your tire pressure too when you're doing your little tune-ups and stuff. All right guys, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching my videos. Hope this helps you guys out a little bit. I make mistakes every day, so I'm not perfect at it either. But uh, I do like to help people out if I can. If you've got a better way to do it, let me know. I uh, appreciate all the support. Thank y'all, and I'll see you in the next video.